Hey everybody, B Rad here. Today I'm going to be showing you my uh, chainsaw mill setup that I'm currently using. Um, I just built this a few weeks ago and I've only milled up the two logs you see there in the background. You got the, an ash log on the left and a walnut log on the right. So uh, I'm just going to be showing you what I'm using and how I use it. So probably the most important thing you're going to want to do is uh, put on your safety gear. Uh, it's pretty loud and dusty. You should probably really wear some sort of face mask if you're uh, sensitive to dust, but your nose catches most of it. So uh, you're definitely going to want to wear some earmuffs, some uh, eyeglasses. I do have chainsaw chaps because most of the time you are kneeling down pretty close to the chain. Uh, you don't want to get your leg in there. So the next uh, most important thing is going to be the chainsaw that you're using to hook up to your mill attachment here. Uh, this saw here is the MS661C. I am use a 32 inch bar there. I do also have a 25 inch bar, but I don't really use that for the mill. Um, this chainsaw works pretty good. I believe it's uh, right in the 90cc area. You definitely want the biggest saw that you can get your hands on. Um, takes a lot of power to mill through this stuff. And uh, this saw here works pretty good. Okay, with the chain saw, you're going to want to use ripping chains, which is the one here on the left. It has a 10 degree cut instead of a cross cut chain, which has a 30 degree cut. Now I didn't even try it with a cross cut, but uh, pretty much every video you see on YouTube, they don't get too far, too fast with the cross cut chain. So you're going to want to invest in some rip chains. Now um, I bought two of them. I can't remember how much they were exactly, but uh, they are only 30 40 bucks if I remember right. So it's uh, definitely worth the money to get those. Another thing you're going to need along with your chainsaw mill is some sort of rails to put on the actual log for your first pass. Now this one here I made is I believe 7 feet long. Uh, yeah 7 because most of the logs I get are 6 foot long because that's all the longer my trailer and small winch can handle. Um, there is a video on that previously of this one showing that so yeah this is just one by one angle iron with some holes drilled in the cross braces and um, you're gonna run a run some lag screws down into the wood um, you don't want to use anything too long you gotta be careful because uh, then you'll hit it with your chainsaw when you're making your first pass um, it's also nice to have a level you can kind of make sure that when you tighten the screws down the uh, metal doesn't get uh, skewed from each end that, and then your uh, cut will be all wavy so definitely try to get it on there as straight as you can um, I do also have a I think it's 10 foot long one that way you can do 8 uh, foot logs but I don't have any of those yet so uh, we'll just stick with this okay this here is the most important thing besides everything else uh, you're going to need something to put your chainsaw in. So this is the chainsaw mill that I made. Um, I looked previously at buying some, but at the cost of them. And I already had a welder and have some ability to make this stuff. I figured it would be easier just to make it myself. Um, the steel I got at a local um, metal yard. They sell new and used, so some of this is used steel. But I try to get new stuff and then just get 10, 10 or 12 foot lengths. That way I have plenty of extra to make another one or something for other projects. So the steel probably cost me 50 bucks, but I probably have enough of it to make a second one if I really wanted. Um, I made this to specifically fit my chainsaw with the 32 inch bar. Um, as you can see that there is the front half then your chain 
gets clamped in here to here for the front one and um, actually just bolted this piece here on while the other end is welded that way if I really wanted to I could drill a hole closer up here and do the 25 inch chain if I wanted but uh, the cut cut width wouldn't be very much with this I get a 24 inch cut width which is about all I need um, that walnut log I, you saw earlier was 24 inches it just fit so all this steel here the main frame is one inch by one one by one uh, square tube I'm not sure what the wall thickness is but it was lightweight um, this piece here where the one this is here is one inch by two inch rectangle tube that's eighth inch wall then this uh, square here is I believe two and a half inch by two and a half inch it's like what your receiver hitch is and that's the part that actually telescopes up and down to change your cut depth and then you've got two 5 16 24 thread um, bolts in here to pinch the bar this uh, rectangle bar against itself so you can change your cut depth like I said that's on both both ends you see there now down here where you actually hook your chain or uh, clamp your chainsaw into this here is one inch one inch rectangle tube again Oh, got my shadow. And then right there, there's two small pieces where the chain actually, or not the chain, the bar actually clamps onto is one inch by, I think I cut them two inches long to get as much clamp uh, area as I could on the actual bar. Because you don't want just that steel all there dragging along the edge of the log. So that's why I cut out this piece. Um, here to run all the way to the other side and that's what actually rubs on the log to make it easier to push um, I did also make an auxiliary oiler even though the oiler on that saw works pretty good I'd rather have um, a little too much going on especially down here at the end where you might not be getting the oil all the way down to it's just a piece of inch and a half PVC you bolted on a couple of caps that's a quarter inch um, ball valve and I just put a barbed fitting on the end and ran a hose with a piece of copper around it to try to get it to stay where it wants but it just shakes around so I did buy um, this fitting here goes from that quarter inch pipe down to eighth inch and then I'll be running this piece of 3 16 soft copper so I'll be able to bend that where I want it and it should stay and along with that I made these two tools here so I don't have to take my uh, regular set of tools with me and just take these two here and you can pretty much get everything done uh, it's just a half inch wrench I cut off and welded this um, Allen wrench on. That's what holds the the bolts here up in there. Those are Allen head. If you had to take uh, tighten them, like I said, or if I drilled other holes, I could use the 25 inch bar. Then we've got a uh, little half inch socket uh, wrench thing, as you want everyone to call it. That way you can tighten your pinch bolts here so you can change your cut depth. So I'll put the saw in here. That way you can kind of see how everything uh, goes together. Okay, here you can see it with the chainsaw in. I didn't tighten anything up yet. Uh, I'm not actually cutting today. But you can see that uh, you just pinch the bar into them clamps 
Uh, and you're pretty much ready to go. Just gotta change your cut depth. Well, one thing you wanna be careful with is to not pinch way up here on the nose sprocket. You don't wanna pinch that and get that all bound up. It'll get hot and you'll ruin your bar pretty quick. So I'm back off of that, even where the sprocket would end, which would be over here. I'm back at least an inch to uh, prevent that from happening. And yeah, like I said, this oiler, you just move it around to where you want it and it dribbles right here at the sprocket going down into the drive links. Um, it is easier to use this with two people. Uh, it is doable with one, but it's a lot easier for two people to use it. A lot easier to push and stuff. So uh, I'll show you the logs that I milled up here. And uh, the next video, I'll show you uh, me actually cutting something with it. So here's some of the walnuts that I cut. I took the top layers off. Uh, these were cut down pretty recently, um, just over the past summer, closer towards the fall. Um, I had painted the ends to try to keep the ends from cracking. It looks like it worked pretty good so far. Um, these here are, I believe, inch and a quarter thick. And then the ones down there are three inches thick. I'm not sure what I'm going to use them on yet. But uh, it leaves a pretty pretty smooth finish, really. Um, you know, it wouldn't take too much with a, a thickness planer to clean these up real nice. And they're just sitting out here drying, so we'll just have to wait. But, uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, expect a video here pretty soon as long as the weather holds out for uh, some actual milling videos. Uh, getting to see it in use. I'll post that up. So uh, thanks. Bye.